Choosing a power supply for your gaming PC has always been somewhat of a simple decision. You just need to see an 80 plus gold certification and a power supply with enough wattage, and you're golden, right? Well, in this video, I will be guiding you through how you can choose or upgrade to the best power supply in 2023 and beyond. And you need to stay until the end for my most important tips and recommendations. So let's start by clarifying what you need to be looking for so that you won't get fooled by all of the marketing strategies that these companies use. The most common headlines for power supplies are 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. These names are associated with the power supply's power efficiency or the amount of wasted energy, which could mean a lower or a higher power bill. In most cases, you would probably want to get the higher end power supply model and also save some electricity on the side, but it's not that simple. First and foremost, you need to choose a PSU that actually fits in your gaming PC. There are two form factors to choose from, SFX and ATX. SFX is the smaller and rarer size, generally used in smaller form factor builds or smaller cases. ATX is the larger and more common of the two, used in ATX or micro ATX PC cases. If you have an unusual size case, it's very important that you check the power supply form factor specifications. A feature that most of us are looking for is whether a power supply is modular or non-modular. A modular power supply allows you to detach and attach all of the cables that you need, while a non-modular power supply has all of the cables fixed to the PSU, meaning that you have more cable clutter in the power supply shroud. Some people consider this a gimmick, but it can be useful if you're trying to reduce cable clutter and make cable management a bit easier. There are also semi-modular power supplies that have the motherboard and sometimes even the processor cables fixed to the power supply itself, while others like SATA, Molex, and PCIe cables are detachable. These are also a good option to consider if you are at a more limited budget, but more on that later. Next up, I will explain why the power supply's 80 plus rating should not be a deal breaker. But first, please subscribe to get notified when I release more interesting tech content. So there are a few reasons why a power supply's 80 plus rating isn't that big of a deal. And the first one is that the difference between tiers is very small. Let's start by comparing 80 plus bronze to 80 plus titanium. 80 plus bronze offers an efficiency of 82% on average compared to 80 plus titanium, which offers an efficiency of 92% on average. But the real difference is that a titanium power supply costs up to twice as much for just a 10% improvement, which means that titanium or platinum power supplies aren't an option for a more budget-oriented build. But more on this later. Then we've got multi-rail versus single-rail power supplies, so does it really matter? Well, your power supply provides power at 12, 5, and 3.3 volts, but almost all the power is delivered at 12 volts, which is the most important. A single rail PSU gives 12 volts of power on a single circuit, while a multi-rail PSU provides 12 volts divided into two or more circuits, hence the name multi. So what's the difference? There really isn't one, because both types of power supplies perform great, since the only physical difference is whether the current travels through one or more circuits to get to your system. So don't worry about which type of power supply you should get. But first, if you're a music lover just like me, then hear me out. Imagine having the world's entire music library at your fingertips, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Well, that's exactly what Amazon Music Unlimited brings to the table. Whether you're going to work, hitting the gym, or simply chilling at home, Amazon Music Unlimited has playlists tailored for every mood and occasion. It's like having a personal DJ 24-7 with over 100 million songs currently available. And speaking of personalized experiences, Amazon Music Unlimited goes the extra mile. It recommends new artists, songs, and playlists based on your unique taste, so you're always discovering something fresh. But that's not all. If you're ready to elevate your music game, I've got an exclusive offer just for you. When you sign up today using my link, you can enjoy an exclusive Amazon Music Unlimited 30-day free trial. It's the perfect chance to explore all that Amazon Music Unlimited has to offer. Take the next step and dive right in by clicking the link in the video description. Now let's get back to the video. If we come back to the 80 plus rating system, another reason why you should even ignore it is because the 80 plus rating does not directly correlate to the power supply's quality. 
This is something that most people just assume and make the mistake of paying a load of money on some 80 plus gold power supplies that are really bad quality. Some power supplies with high efficiency should actually be avoided, while other bronze power supplies have great quality and performance. Another thing to keep in mind is that these specifications and certifications are from a golden sample, which is a perfect quality component that is tested and then released with those specifications. While in reality, this is not true since other samples provide lower performance and efficiency. So with all of that, 80 plus certifications don't tell us anything. So you should only rely on power supplies that have been reviewed by other third-party testers, since they test the retail unit with actual performance rather than the golden sample or demo power supply given by the manufacturer. Now, let's talk cables. PSUs usually have the motherboard, PCIe, SATA, and Molex connectors, with some also having 12 volts of high power, which provides a lot of power to higher-end graphics cards. The biggest takeaway here, without entering too much detail, is that you should never mix cables between different power supplies, since this can cause the death of both the power supply and the rest of your components. Now, some of you may be wondering what actually determines a good power supply, so an easy way to do so is by looking at the PSU cultists list, which is a group of power supply and electrical engineering enthusiasts that put together a big list, including all the PSUs based on their quality. The way to determine this is by looking at the power supply tier, from A tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is absolutely terrible. Every tier has a set of design, quality, and protection standards, as well as speculative power supplies that haven't been officially reviewed but have enough specifications and details to be placed in a tier. I will leave a link to their website in the description below. So which tier should you pick to fit your power supply needs? At the budget level, a C-tier PSU is probably fine, but when we go up in component power draw and the price of the build increases, we can think of going up a tier, like buying insurance. So anywhere from mid-range to high-end, you should be looking for B to A-tier power supplies. But for high-end builds, I recommend sticking to A-tier power supplies, especially when having an RTX 3070, RX 6800 or higher, including the new RTX 4070, an RX 7800 or higher. So let's talk about how many watts you should get for your PSU. Because of the rising CPU and GPU power draws, you really need to be careful when choosing your power supply wattage. If you use PC part picker, I recommend you first look at the estimated wattage and multiply it by 1.5. Something extremely important though, is that recent high-end graphics cards have been found to reach over 2.5 times their rated power draw. These insane spikes in power draw caused the entire system to shut down, thanks to the power supply's safety mechanism, which is there to prevent any component damage. This means that we need to add a tax or fee for the beefier graphics cards. I recommend adding an extra 100 to 150 watts on top of multiplying the PC part picker, estimated wattage by 1.5. So if the estimated wattage on PC part picker is 350 watts, then you multiply that by 1.5 and you get 525. Then you add an extra 100 to 150 watts, depending on your graphics card's power draw, and you get the minimum power supply wattage you should get, which in this case is 650 to 700 watts. You can always add more to have headroom for these crazy power spikes, and you can upgrade other components later on. And last but not least, we finally reached the PSU recommendations. I will be mentioning a few A and B tier power supplies and their links will be in the description below. For the high-end A tier units, we've got the MSI AGF series with 1000 watt and 850 watt models currently available. They also have the new PCIe Gen 5 connector for the newer generation of high-end graphics cards. These power supplies are for mid to high-end systems that require not only more wattage, but also more safety concerning any huge power spikes. As for the low to mid-end B-tier units, you have the Cooler Master V series, also available in a variety of wattages ranging from 750 watts to 550 watts. They are a good option if you are on a more limited budget and want something that works well. If these models are not available in your region, keep in mind what you have to look for when purchasing a power supply and which one works best for you. But even after all of this information about power supplies, you are still faced with another problem, which is that you need a motherboard 
capable of providing enough power and performance to your graphics card, processor, and other components. So watch that video next.